come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're uh, the book club for movies, That's right? Uh, right? Uh, <laughs> podcast where every week a uh, movie is chosen. Not completely at random. Round Robin by one of the Saturday Night Freak Show superstars. And we watch it, then we sit around and talk about it for your listening pleasure and education. Who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. I'm Brandon. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Brandon, where would the listeners know you from? Uh, A few things, maybe. Uh, I do another podcast with some friends called Sock Monkey Sound. Um, You can find that at... Sock monkey sound, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm sure we have an email and a Twitter handle and all that shit, but it's I just get drunk and talk about music. So. It's out there in the interwebs. There you go. It's also my third time as a on the Saturday Night Freak Show. A three-peat. A three-peat. Yep. So next time I'm on, I get to pick a movie. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. how it goes. Well, That's cute. Somehow Five you skipped out though. on your second episode because you can't even remember what it was. You, you were on uh, Deconstructing Harry. I was on Deconstructing Harry, which is an interesting choice for a freak show movie. <laughs> I liked it. I love Woody Allen, so whatever. Yeah. But you can find uh, us, well, you already did, maybe, but uh, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Google Play, and more. And if you like what you hear here, we here, ask here. that you uh, here, 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 give us a We're star a rating. All of a sudden, you're here, here, here. here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give us a star, a like, a thumbs up, a review. Uh, we'd really appreciate it if you can help us find other people like yourself. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the movie for a little while. Then we're going to answer some listener mail. That's right. How can the listeners get a hold of us? Probably on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And via email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. So we'll read that uh, later on, and then we'll come back and do our final wrap-ups where you'll find out what everyone thought of tonight's movie. But tonight, we watched a movie chosen by... Colin! Colin! Colin, what did we watch? We watched Night of the Creeps. It was great. It was from, yeah. from, from the John, year 1986 <laughs> and directed by a fellow known as Fred Decker. Now we're saying. Monster Squad fame. Check out our previous episode on Monster Squad. And he also <laughs> co-wrote... House. That's the right. House. Check yeah, out yeah. our previous <laughs> House episode. <laughs> and he also wrote and directed... What? RoboCop 3. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't there a more recent movie he wrote on that was like, wait, what? He wrote that? Like, Well, he is currently in the process of, as we are writing, the, or as we're recording this, they're making The Predator. <gasps> the that's Predator. right. Which is yes. written by Fred Decker and, and directed Shane, by right. Shane Black. So it's Fred and Decker, or yeah. Black and Decker. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. Black. Well done. Yeah. All right. These are the yeah. people who yeah. made the Monster Squad. <laughs> yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it's in good hands, right? Um, I hope so. Shane Debat- Black debatable. is in the original Predators. The so, cast yeah. get, worries me more and more. The more cast that comes out for that movie, the more I'm... Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Anything that's being remade is worrisome nowadays. Oh, yeah. Let, I mean, let's just it's be culture real. we live in. Yeah. I mean, what's, a, what's a remake... Uh, what's a recent remake that you guys thought was really f- well done? I like... Dawn of the Dead, the yes. Zack Snyder's on a dead, but the Evil Dead remake. Evil Dead remake. Evil Dead remake. Evil Dead remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Freddie Alvarez, I'll go see anything yeah. that guy directs, you know? Yeah. All right, so Night of the Creeps is um, a movie that I like to consider part of the fun horror genre from the 80s. Mm-hmm. It seems like the 80s was when we got a lot of these movies. How would you describe a fun horror movie? Like of this type. It doesn't uh, take itself too seriously. Yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say, like, yeah. semi-self-aware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, camp on purpose, but not ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, in the like the fact that in this, he literally goes, what is this, a B-movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a homicide scene or a B-movie? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, know. it predates, like, the scream era of complete self-awareness, where, you know, everybody's aware that they're, you know, in a movie and, and mocking the tropes of it. Right. But, I mean, there's enough of it in this where you can kind of, like, you know, see that they're kind of heading that way. Mm -hmm. And it's like an homage to, like, 50s and 60s science fiction movies. Oh, in the beginning, it very much is. And horror films. Yeah. I kind of liked that. I I thought that that was really interesting. That first scene that was took place in the 50s ever was, like, the exact scene from The Blob. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. exactly. I, I, t- I thought, too, like, the first, like, 15 minutes of this movie where it's, like, uh, a couple on Lover's Lane and everything was very much like Texarkana Moonlight Killer mm-hmm. story. Just yeah. l- note by note lifted into that. And- well, it's the urban legend of the hook, right? Because right. I'm mm-hmm. like, I've always wanted to, there was a t- point in time where I'm like, I got to make a short film of this. And mm-hmm. Of course, people have. But the idea that there's, you know, a couple on Lover's Lane mm-hmm. and there's an escaped mental patient. and It's you know, like the most famous horror story. Yeah, yeah it think, really right? is. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's a campfire story. Yep. Yeah. Well, actually, we should preface this by the movie before it starts before out before that 50s, even yeah. it starts out in space yeah. and the first time i saw this this was not what i expected from this movie nope no not but what i expected it starts off with like it looks like a corridor out of the movie alien or something and then all of a sudden that is uh deflated or made better by the fact that like these tiny little aliens holly how would you describe those aliens <laughs> um i describe them as uh Teletubbies from the hills have eyes. <laughs> That's how I describe them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were very. I mean, it was funny. I mean, but that scene and then into the rest of the movie. I was just like, man, what a hard, like, that's a weird... <laughs> it almost feels tacked on. Like, it feels yeah. like it was done in post. Like, so, they threw it on at so the end. So completely two separate movies. I yeah. kind of, I want to watch that movie. Yeah. I really want to watch like, that movie. Like, yeah, Hills Have Eyes, Teletubbies carrying what looks like canisters from Secret of the Ooze, yeah. Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Like, I'm on board. I want to watch that movie. <laughs> yeah. And it's like some kind of experiment that tr- they're trying to contain. And the, the possessed one, because there was the one with the white eyes... Has sure. got the There's your movie, Colin. Night the of the Creeps prequel. Yeah. We, we get that story. There's that your movie. actually takes planet place the on creeps. their planet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Planet of the Creeps. Yep. Planet of the Creeps. Mm-hmm. Here's what I want to say. That movie would have been just fine without that 45-second exposition scene yeah. of how those things... Like, that was not necessary at all. No, no but awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it was awesome. But like, yeah, but that, it. It, like it. it feels to me like it was done in post. Like It but feels you, to me they were like, you know, we should add this on at the beginning. You, fig- you figured the budget that they had, you know, whatever it cost to make those little creatures and the, you know, the spaceship hallway, unless they just have one of those laying around in Hollywood, they probably do. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious if there was anyone famous inside those costumes. Like, is there a Warwick Davis in there or something? Like yeah, yeah, or D- you know? Deep Roy. Uh, yeah. He would be, yeah. Or Vern Troyer, even. Well, it feels like you're saying young it, Peter it, Dinklage. It feels yeah. like, like two movies, but it almost feels to me like three. You know, the fact that we go from yeah, the mm-hmm. space movie to then this black and white 1950s sorority row mm-hmm. thing. It's where, very, it's very much this director. I mean, to, what I got from it, it's very much this director is like, I really want to make this kind of movie. I also really want to make this kind of movie, and I also really want to make this kind of movie. But I'm only going to get the funding I'm for only one. So the here, for one. yeah, yeah. That's this how movie it wears its influences on its sleeve, 100. Yeah. percent Oh yeah, I mean, you can say that by the last names of everybody in the movie. Oh yeah, Cronenberg, yeah. Landis, Carpenter, Ramey, yeah. Carpenter, Hooper. There was yeah. another one. I wrote them all down. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Cameron. Cameron. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Romero. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone's. There They're was very like a pointed period in time they say when then that movies were doing that. They were, you know, even like The Howling. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. names all of its characters after werewolf movie directors. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's paying homage. But that's to, a little bit more of a deeper cut than like, you know, werewolf movies is much more of a niche group than like Raimi, Hooper, Carpenter. Those are all, all of like, the yeah, very like yeah, all, all the mainstream horror <laughs> yeah. directors of this time. Well, they even yeah. had uh, the janitor at the uh, cryo facility was mm-hmm. Miner, and that's mm-hmm. the guy who directed Fred Decker's house, mm-hmm. you know, right. Steve Miner. So he's working everybody in there. If you're working in horror movies right now, boom, your your mm-hmm. last name is in this movie. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the opening scene or, you know, the 50s scene, with the kids on Lover's Lane, you know, as Brandon said, it's straight out of the blob mm-hmm. where a fireball comes from space and lands in the woods. And so what do you get to do? You're going to go check it out. Obviously. And then the thing's like going to jump in, you know, the little slug creature is going to jump right. into your mouth. Yeah. Because that's what happens because everybody goes to these things that fall from space and poke them. That being said, if I saw something falls from space, I thought it was close. I'd go I, check I it out. I would fucking go check it out. Right? Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. I would. I, so I can't blame anybody for that. You know how much because... meteorites probably sell for on eBay? Right? I, what if down. there's like a yeah, fucking, some sort of like uh, rock on there that's like worth more than platinum? Right. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Until you touch it and then it gets on you and you start growing, like turning green and all this other stuff. Yeah. The creep yeah. show? Anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Something. Um, so the... Uh, the main character, well, okay, so I guess the guy that's infected, some of the, the creeps of this movie are these little slug-like creatures 
um, that go in through your mouth and then they gestate, lay eggs in your brain and take you over, turn you into a zombie. So then the third you know, part of the movie is going to become a zombie film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy gets uh, cryogenically frozen for, what was it, like 20 odd years. Why was he cryogenically like, frozen? Yeah. I can only assume that they found the-, the alien meteor and knew that could be because he was found close to it. Thought he, had, he was infected. He the, we can't deal with creeps. it. Let's freeze him. He had so the creeps inside him. All they had of to preserve them. It. There was like a ton of them in the canister. Mm-hmm. And from what we saw, only one of them. It only takes one to infect you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking. I am looking. Too Brandon's far breaking down the logic of this it. movie. Oh, oh no, where'd the other yep. ones go? How come there wasn't an outbreak in fifty? Well, why was that? The, That's the other movie. The other prequel. Why was Night that the? the So the authorities back then found like a zombie dude and like, all right, well, let's freeze his ass. Yep. Smart move. Mm -hmm. Preventative measure. Mm -hmm. Sure. We'll make it. We'll make it someone else's problem in the future. (laughs) That's future people's problem, not ours. We know how to deal with this. We're just going to make him into a corpsicle. Really like dingy college basement. Where he looks like Zordon in a tube. Yeah. Yeah. He's lit up like Zordon from Power Rangers in that cryogenic tube. Yeah, that's uh, how you do it. The whole thing was weird. Yeah. yeah. Was, I liked it. Yeah, but, but, it, was a little but it made no sense. If yeah. you yeah. look too much into it, there's some giant holes you can poke in it for well, sure. Well, you just got to go with the logic of the 50s, I guess, sci-fi movie, right? That they're up to... Okay, I know. That doesn't hold water. I mean, you got to make it I mean, it, really, yeah, my, qu- my question started with the little Teletubbies. Why is the little guy trying to get rid of the creeps and the other ones are shooting him? Because he know, was possessed by the, the creep. He, one got to him. Yeah, yeah, he had the white eyes of the... Yeah, but do you have enough wherewithal as... At an, that point in time. ...an infest, infected person to want to preserve the rest of them like that? They seemed a little more... The movie's a little loose on this. Yeah. 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 Because later on, there is a character who gets uh, infected and is able to talk and is yeah. articulate. Right, and, yeah. Know, maybe, that was like, maybe that was like love that made him do that. Like, he's <laughs> loved his best friend. <laughs> maybe. Well, they, he also said that there was... Call a me romantic. <laughs> But he said there was a point in time when you become a zombie and you're able to like because he was dead at that point, but he was still able to have motor functions and some type of awareness. How was that? Because everybody else is like instantly a a fucking zombie, basically. Yeah. Like the Bradster. The Bradster. (laughs) The lab assistant. Because he was like right outside her door and it got him in the mouth and then he immediately didn't. It was just a zombie and didn't have any. That's what I'm saying. It's playing a little fast and loose yeah. with the rules here. <laughs> I don't. I don't. A little. Mind that. I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Um, so our main character well, then the movie moves forward to 1986, and we meet our main characters, JC and Chris, and Chris. Yeah. Oh shit. It was like a Chris. Yeah, Chris Romero and somebody also carpenter the, it was right? it was a hyphen carpenter? name it, i think it was carpenter hooper it was a hyphen name it was two last names <laughs> because, because, the because the way because the way like when the when the guy came up to him he was like blah, 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 and like like right off their names it was very pointed that they were mm-hmm. references like it was real ham-fisted oh, yeah. how many times in that one scene did he say ramey yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, ramey. yeah yeah all right ramey, detective landis <laughs> yeah 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 well the our main characters are two uh freshmen in college it's pledge week and uh, that's also why we're doing the show like now, right? Because mm-hmm. it's still prom is going on. Or no, it's a, although this is college. Yeah, although college. Pledge Week yeah. could also that's, be like in September. That'd be, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. You yep. got me. I just remember yeah. formal wear. That was why last week I was like, yeah, we're going to watch a See, prom movie. That actually it's confused not. me. I was like, for, wait, are they going to prom? Oh, no, no, they're in college. It's so just wait, what? Formal. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> formal for <laughs> no reason. Yeah. I, I think it was probably like homecoming. Mm-hmm. Pledge Week. But even still, homecoming in college. You don't go to a dance. Yeah. It's just like, hey, there's a formal tomorrow night. I mean, I'll go to a formal, whatever. <laughs> Brandon likes formals. That sounds like go. fun. <laughs> Why not? You get to wear tuxes? A tux. You went and rented yep. a tux. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. So these two, well, I mean, to get him to the formal, he's got to have a date. So it's Chris, like, sees the girl of his dreams here. Cynthia Cronenberg. Yeah. yeah right. Another yeah, reference. Like yeah. Cronenberg. <laughs> That's such a common last name, you know? It's like, <laughs> it really is. Like well, this Smith is also uh, like I wonder if uh, have you, any of you guys seen Cronenberg's uh, early movie. It was either called Shivers or They Came From Within. Yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. Shivers. Yeah. It's about slugs that get into your yes. uh, body. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Which also like okay, so like I said, this movie like really wears its influences on its sleeve. But 
After watching this, I realized how many movies took things from this. Mm-hmm. Slither. Slither. Oh, James Gunn yeah. has to love this movie. There's no way yeah. James Gunn has not seen this movie. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah, Slither is very much inspired by this. Yeah, because in Slither, something comes from space. They're little slugs. They look There's, the yeah. same. They just move better because they're not on fishing wire. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the uh, helpful, you know, advent of Blu-ray, sh- super sharp HD technology. We can see that because I never saw that, you know, back when it was on VHS. But now, yeah, you can see the little filament line or whatever that they're mm-hmm. pulling the, the little practical all over the place. All over. Oh, yeah. all over. So we have these two freshmen. That want to pledge to the beta fraternity so he can then get the girl of his dreams. Mm-hmm. He thinks right. that's, that's just going to do it. Typical freshman, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, she's um, at a frat party. So, mm-hmm. She was at a frat party. They're not far off. Put two and two together. <laughs> um, and now that guy was rusty. Yeah, from yeah, right? European, uh, vacation, European vacation. vacation. That's right. Yeah. The poor man's Anthony Michael Hall. Yep. Doing his best, Anthony Michael Hall. Really? His goddamn best. The whole movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, even like 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 the eye rolls behind where she couldn't see and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was oh, all yeah. there. The sweaters, the hair, it, yes. it was all there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it had to be why they cast him in uh, mm-hmm. National Lampoon because it was like, well, because how many movies did Anthony Michael Hall do? Just There's the first only one? one. The kids change out they, every, they change yeah. every yeah. movie. Yeah. So he was the best Anthony Michael Hall impersonator of. I thought he did a damn good job. Yeah, he did pretty good. I mean,. <laughs> Yeah. He was dedicated. Yeah. And his friend ha- was on uh, crutches, but yeah. not like I, I thought you were name. saying he's on a show called no, no, no. Crutches. I, oh, no, no, he's no. actually on crutches in the movie. His character movie. is yeah. on crutches, but not like I rolled an ankle crutches, like like cerebral like palsy, cerebral yeah. palsy crutches, yeah. which yeah. which like made me make a huge leap to be like, is this proto like Walt Jr.? Like I was like, <laughs> no, no, I'm just thinking that because it's the same type of crutches. Oh, that's yeah. the only reason I'm <laughs> thinking that. Yeah, I know. I thought that at first I was like, it's just because he has dark hair and has crutches. That's the only reason I'm thinking that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, mm-hmm. I guess his function in the movie, I mean, is to be. Supportive best friend, and he because he figures that he's never going to get a girlfriend. He's going to help his buddy uh, get in with uh, yeah. Cynthia. But he's got way more charisma, right? Well, because he has way nothing more. to lose. He doesn't give a fuck. That's yeah. why. I mean, he's the guy's got, wearing like, Hawaiian shirts with fishing vests. He's got nothing to fucking lose yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah, he's got like a great like perspective, I guess, on college life. Which is, <laughs> you know, because even when he's in with the cops, like he doesn't care. Yeah, no, he doesn't yeah. give a shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. like how much trouble am I going to get in here? Really? Yeah, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> yeah. He's got the right idea because that's way more attractive than the other mm-hmm. guy. The other Confidence, guy was, right? Yep. The other guy was annoying key. as shit. I was yep. like, this, I like this kid. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of funny that, you know, you know, because he's the one who's approaching Cynthia. Mm-hmm. I kind of figure that, like, you know, I know this is the way the movie's going to go, but it seems like, you know, wouldn't it be a twist? <laughs> Later in that yeah. movie, when she knocks on their dorm room, I swear, and he and Anthony Michael, Anthony Michael Hall <laughs> opens the door. <laughs> I thought she was going to ask to go on a date with the other guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought so, too. I thought I for don't, sure that's totally what was thought going, going that, that way. Because that was did all the talking to her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did all the heavy lifting. Right. <laughs> he did. It, it was solid, man. Yeah. He had a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cynthia, so, Cynthia's dating the Bradster, who's an yeah. asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of the... Uh, the who looks significantly fraternity. older than everyone else in this movie. Oh, like, yeah. literally it's the hair. kicks yeah. the crutches out from under. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's what? a jerk. Well, I mean, you have yeah. to establish that the Bradster and his cronies are awful, right? Because mm-hmm. all the fraternity all guys are. All 80s frat guys are awful. Yep. All is there a movie I, uh, where 80s frat or Is there a movie where frat guys are the good guys? Animal House. Animal That's house. true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because like even nerds. now, like, you know, when you see like uh, uh, 22, is yeah. 22 Jump Street. Yeah. 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 Well, what, what was the one with neighbors? The neighbors. neighbors? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah Those goddamn annoying fucking frat. Old mm-hmm. school. Old school. Old school. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So maybe it's split. Maybe but, there are. You know. But 80s. Yeah. 80s. 80s. It's rare. Mm-hmm. It's rare. Animal House is an exception. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, even then, I wouldn't necessarily want to hang out with the dudes. Mm. Like, no. no. There's lots of no, beer, not really. beer drinking and play. I mean, all the pranks. stereotypes were there, but it's just like slamming brews, mm-hmm. talking about getting laid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Calling each other bros. Bro. Yeah. This movie does start with, as Brandon pointed out, some of the worst ADR I've ever seen in my entire life. I like, couldn't believe it. It took like it took what a, a good ten seconds to figure out who was talking. It took a really right? long time for us to figure out. Who it was, was a shot. I thought yeah. the movie yeah. was narrated. Yeah, like I thought there that's was how like, bad it was. A narrator, and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of weird." I had started the sh- when we were in college. <laughs> yeah, the shot was so far. Panned I bet you're out. wondering how I got here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the shot was so far panned out, but their voices were 
mm-hmm. on the mic, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, right in front of you. Yeah, <clears throat> and they weren't color coded, so you didn't draw your attention directly to them. Mm-hmm. Right no, away, you had to wait till they walked square into frame to figure out yeah. who was talking. I was looking around at all the people in that shot, and I'm like, all right, who's talking? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and trying to figure it out. Well, they pull a prank at the behest of the betas to go and, uh, you know, get a cadaver out of the morgue and drop it off at one of the sorority houses. But they break into the basement, which has the cryogenic storage facility, and end up setting loose the uh, the, the corpsicle, as JC calls it. And uh, that, of course, you know, eventually starts the, the plot in motion because then the slugs get out of its brain. Mm-hmm. But... Called in to investigate this is Detective Ray Cameron, played by Tom Atkins, the Tom Atkins. <laughs> now, this guy has been in movies since, I don't know, the late 70s. I mean, like mostly, you know, I'm through like John Carpenter stuff. Escape from New York, Halloween 3. The Fog. The Fog. He's like the yep. lead guy in The Fog. And, and, he, and in this movie, he does the same thing he does in every movie. Drink, smoke, answer the phone really dramatically. <laughs> Thrill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> like the the first shot is him like sleeping with a Raymond Carver novel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was I'm trying to look up on the on my phone for a minute and I cannot find it. Who is that super stereotypical like 50s noir writer? Raymond that, Chandler. Raymond Chandler. Yeah, because yes. he did Philip Marlowe. But yeah. that's what I think what they're going for. Oh, here. A, he's yeah, the gumshoe. Totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a he's a cop, but he's hard boiled, right? Yeah. yeah. Wears the trench coat, smokes and drinks, and that's wears all he does. Hawaiian shirts yeah. unbuttoned halfway down oh, yeah. all the time, and has witty catchphrases. I just witty. love the fucking <laughs> yeah. attitude. I would of this say ham fisted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thrill me every time he answers the every phone. It's Miller time. time. There was no setup or knockdown for yeah, that. That just yeah. came out of nowhere. It was all over yeah. the place. It's, it's Miller time. If his last name was Miller. Perfect. Would have worked great. <laughs> well, it yeah. T- yeah, yeah. Been sick. yeah. It but ties in compl- because they didn't used it in Ghostbusters and it was okay. It ties in because they were the That's only sick. product placement in that movie was fucking Miller Highlight. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. There was and some Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah. And she's like, half turned Pepsi. Half turned. Yeah. She's like pure, so she's not drinking booze. She's drinking like a Pepsi for the, mm-hmm. for the new generation. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But Ray- Miller High Life everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. That's pretty cool. It was the official beer of the. Night of 80s. Dreams. Pi, Theta, <laughs> Epsilon. No. They were the betas. The, be- the betas. <laughs> um, but Tom Atkins has had like this really long career. You know, I mean, it seemed like for a while he was in everything, you know, Creep Show. He was the dad. And, you know, mm-hmm. he was on all these movies that, you know, you grew up watching. And it's like, this guy is awesome because he's just a badass in all the movies that he's in. And then he showed up again in Drive Angry. Or no, sorry. He was yeah. in, uh, no, he was My in Bloody Drive Angry. Valentine. And Drive Angry. It's he was like great they rescued Drive him. Angry. From, he was fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. I liked that in Drive Angry too. they led up to his reveal, too. Like, it was a big build up to, like, it's Tom Atkins. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I imagine there was a lot of people that saw Drive Angry and were like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, like. Yeah, you know, but, yeah but for those of us who mm-hmm. remember, like. It was, it was great. Tom Atkins is back on the screen again. Mm-hmm. Tom Atkins may not have the same, uh, you know, like, cult movie cachet as, say, Bruce Campbell. Mm-hmm. But would I blow your mind if I told you that they both appeared in a movie together? What? Hold on. Wait. No, don't tell me. Let's try to figure this out. Maniac Cop. <laughs> Shut up, Sean. God damn it, Sean. <laughs> no one asked you over there in the corner. That's right. Well, the listeners probably haven't heard that yet. So. <laughs> but yeah, okay. It is Maniac Cop. It is Cop. Maniac Cop. Okay. Yeah. All well, right. <laughs> But it's just great that they're both like, you know, the main, the two main characters of that movie. So that's like, you know, geek explosion overload. I was hoping maybe, <laughs> maybe he was in the corner of Escape from LA in that surgery scene with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. he was one of the people with like prosthetics on I his face like or something. I feel like Colin would have known and made sure we knew. Like, that's Tom Atkins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's his attitude in this, right? Like every time it's, it's like, Detective in Cameron, is that you? No. Bullwinkle Moose, you know, mm-hmm. like. Oh, just, my God. <laughs> it, mm, I wanted to punch him in the face. Oh, yeah. You weren't I, digging on the whole nah. uh, the bravado? I mean, some of it. Like, towards the end, like, at the end when he's, like, full on, like, badass cop, then it's fun. But at the beginning, like, I really wanted to just punch him in the throat. Sorry. Wow. Yeah. Crushing. Blow. I have more thoughts on that when we get to rev ups. But. <laughs> throat punching? Yeah. yeah. Well, just Tom Atkins in general. We'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to it. Well, the plot conspires to, well, Tom Atkins has like a B plot, which I was like, this really doesn't tie into 
the main plot of the movie, which is, you know, obviously getting to the, uh, the alien infestation and the zombie climax, mm-hmm. right? Like his story relates back to the 1950s prologue where he was the, uh, ex-boyfriend of the girl who gets murdered. Right. Who he right. saw uh, at Inspiration Point or whatever. <laughs> Lover's Lane. <laughs> and was just like, just go home. Mm-hmm. And also, back then in the 50s, not ridiculous. An average guy. Right. Yeah, character. exactly. That's because yeah, he, cause he wasn't reason. hard-boiled yet. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the event that made him hard-boiled. Yeah, because he yeah. spent the past 27 years stewing over this girl that he feels responsible for and reading detective comics. And, and He had like a million of them. And as Holly pointed out while we were watching this, drives the same cop car from 30 years the before. The same car. The same 1950s I think establishing that he lives yeah. in the past. <laughs> Who was his like... Jesus. Whoa. Whoa, man. <laughs> his Hold like... Partner detective that every time he was on screen put a stick of gum in his mouth. Oh, the black guy, standard black guy. Yeah, I don't, well, because it's not an eighties to... movie if you don't have the the white cop with his oh, black yeah. partner. I thought that was a reference something maybe I didn't get. Like I thought. No, I think it's just how because it was we... so in your face, yeah. like obvious every time. Like yeah, that was uh, the was actor actor's maybe choice. trying to to steal <laughs> yeah. a scene. An actor's like, choice. Look at me. <laughs> this is like, my little bit I feel of business. Like he was trying to combat the other guy who was always eating a sandwich. Yeah. He's like, well, you guys, yeah, I've got gum. You got sandwiches? I yeah. got gum. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That was hilarious. The big shot in the morgue when the cops are called to investigate this. Like Slams a, down a briefcase. Yeah, brief, briefcase comes down. And you're like, well, this is going to be some high tech shit. Oh, yeah. Opens Forensics. it up and brings out a sandwich. It's a fucking sandwich. Yeah. I think that's a running joke in movies, right? Yeah. The coroner is always eating. The coroner's around always the, eating. Why is that, that a thing? Yeah, that's Why a is thing. that a thing? Because no one else, no sane person would do it except right. someone who's completely, you know, like immune. Just, yeah, just <laughs> completely desensitized to all death and just doesn't, yeah. it, it, it affects yeah. him none. Well, it's no, like, not well, that you wouldn't want to keep like a medical facility clean. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sanitary. <laughs> well, it's like when we watched uh, the Frank Langella Dracula, Donald Pleasance is eating in every single scene he's in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every scene, he's just yeah. stuffing his face for a no reason. Brilliant move. Other than character choice. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, the kids are seen at the uh, facility. This is how they get placed there by a uh, the the night watchman or whatever. <laughs> the screaming like banshees. <laughs> screaming like banshees. That's great. The Asian dude. Yeah. 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 That all. That Your impression sounded like... much more Eastern European. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really did. Uh, give me a better one. No, no, nope. I, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. So, um, <laughs> David Paymer's in this movie. He is classic character, bad guy. Howard the Duck, no holds barred, is what I know him from. <laughs> he was Billy Crystal's brother in Mr. Saturday Night. Wow. Sure, he was. Wow, you watched wow. that. Movie. I thought No Holds Barred was a deep cut, but you know, <laughs> you saw it did me there. No, Mr. Yeah. Saturday Night is yeah. a deep yeah. cut. Yeah. I've seen No Holds Barred. Yeah. No. Nobody not, saw Mr. No. Saturday. Nobody, yeah. saw, Nobody it. saw that yeah. movie. Who was it about? Oh, pff, I don't know if it was a made up character. <laughs> no, it's about somebody. Is it? Like Mr. Saturday Night's about a, a real Is it biographical? It's yeah. a it's a biopic. Yeah, I think it is. Wow. Well, like, Brandon's uh, looking, looking it up. It one hundred percent is. John, you know? Nope. Okay. Nope. You're so helpful. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. But yeah, he's one of those guys you know his face, but you don't know his name. But and he's mm-hmm. very young in this. Yep. And he's classic David Paymer. And he same thing he always a, does. Becomes a zombie mm-hmm. every time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish in No Holds Barred he became a zombie. That'd be a great ending. To that that movie. would be a great ending. The movie gets a lot of mileage out of like these jokes, right? Like the, uh, the you know, David Paymer Whoa. dies, comes back in the morgue, and then he's walking naked with the V incision from the autopsy, blood all over him. The, the scissors hanging? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, don't see this initially. The joke is you see him stumbling from behind, <clears throat> heading down the hallway, and there's another guy, the night watchman or whatever. Mm-hmm coming towards us who's engrossed in whatever he's reading he's just like looking at reports and he's just like night man see you tomorrow or something like that i don't want to interrupt that uh, mr shana is not a biopic i apologize all right well well that's good that's probably a good thing it's probably good that it's not someone's actual life mr saturday night cost 43 million to make and took in 13 million yeah 43 million and what 80 some uh, ninety one. Still, that's they, that's two? Clinton they, dollars they, probably. It lost thirty mil. Yeah, Oof. they really Oof. believed in that movie. Yeah, I worked at a movie theater. That's why I know it. Otherwise, that's why you saw it. Too, and I remember there was never anybody there. It played for about two weeks, and 
out yeah. the door. And it was out. <laughs> but but the, you saw it in that two weeks, right? Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, I was an usher. I had to watch. So you got, yeah. the end of was the it like Billy Crystal? I, it was dramatic. It was heavily dramatic. I thought was it was it heavily be, dramatic? Yeah, it was not like that. What funny. a bummer. Because you just yeah. said, it briefly That's not I why saw you want to see Billy Crystal. It's about like a comedian, a, yeah. a, 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 a cat skills comedian. Yeah. Yeah. You're thinking, like, okay, this is going to be nothing but no. Billy <laughs> Crystal like camp in your face. It's going to be hilarious. No, because yeah, no. the brothers don't get along. And then it goes through many years and they're old men at the end and they don't like nope, each other. Nope, not interested. I'm out. I'm out. But the humor in this. He's not looking for gold I'm out I guess you're like shooting for the style of jokes or whatever it's like how does this compare to like House or the Monster Squad is it as successful at those at mixing like the jokes and the horror well I think Monster Squad is does, does it much better because you can put yourself in, in the mind of like children being Lame, right? And having lame jokes, and that's mm-hmm. like a thing that they have. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I in, like in Big, when Tom Hanks and his friend have that dumb saying that they say to each mm-hmm. other. Yeah, like you can put yourself there. Like, okay, yeah, we were all kids. We all thought dumb shit. Yeah. Um, as opposed to just like a bunch of, I don't know, college kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Monster Squad. It feels more natural. Correct. It feels way more natural. This movie, it feels like we wrote a script. Fuck, we gotta put in some jokes in here. It's Miller time, right. you know, like, yeah. like that's what it feels like with this movie. Again, I didn't mind it. Even yeah, if, I, even if it, they were shoehorned in, it made me laugh. Right. It's not to its detriment at all, but it's it's definitely not as natural as it would be in like a Monster Squad type situation. See, it got more eye rolls out of me than it did Chucks. So. Well, what you would, you're like, we, really? Yeah. Did they go it, there, especially the detective at first. I thought the exact same thing. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. the third one, like the. It's like all right. I mean, he mm-hmm. kind of redeemed himself at the end with oh, it. Oh, yeah, at the end, I was getting into it. <laughs> through sure. the comedy or through his badassery? I think the bad. Uh, I think it helped. I think the badassery went up and the comedy, he started doing it a little bit less. Yeah. yeah. And it worked. Like, that was that, he was, if he was that steady character through the, the entire thing, it would have been great. Yeah. Well, the only reason I'm asking is because, you know, House is a favorite movie of mine. And, you know, Fred Decker, I believe, was credited with the story on it. So. And a guy named Ethan Wiley actually wrote the movie, and the the way like that movie's batshit crazy, and the humor in that seems to work. Like it works yeah. as a comedy, even though it's a bl- it's black comedy. It's right because yeah. it's basically a psychological horror movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you know, again, if you haven't seen House and the image that you have in your mind off of me saying that doesn't represent the movie at Not all at because all. <laughs> it's designed and directed as a comedy. Yeah. And I think in that movie, maybe it works a little better than it does here. But I, I, yeah. I think that this, well, you know, I don't know, the, the, the mixture of, you know, trying to keep the tone light and at the same time have like legit, you know, um, horror movie moments or whatever, you know, cre- practical creatures and all mm-hmm. that stuff. It's like, you know. I think that's what goes to defining those type of like fun 80s horror movies, right? Where you're mm-hmm. trying to like, you know, we keep saying like Return of the Living Dead or Night of the uh, Night, of the, Night of the Demons or something yeah. like that, where they have like enough jokes that land, you know, and a lightness of tone, but they're still able to deliver like this, you know, the gore moments or whatever mm-hmm. that you're, the audience is showing up to see. You know, it's like this yeah. is why I'm paying my ticket because I want, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Night of the Demons does it really well, honestly. Well, it delivers a lot more gore, like you yeah. know, you yeah. get mm-hmm. a lot more. Yeah, um, like, like with House, I feel like House was more deliberate. Like it had, it had a specific structure. Like it knew they knew what they were doing. They knew the formula that they were following with House. Whereas with this, it seemed a little more, like was it? It seemed more forced. Like they just had to keep adding things. Like House, it seemed like they knew what they were doing from the beginning. This one, it felt like it felt like hodgepodge. You know what I mean? Patchwork. Yeah, exactly. Did it? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, yeah, I think so. As in what you're saying that they because you had like the John Hughes moments with like Anthony Michael Hall and his buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause seriously, at the beginning when we're getting to know the the frat boys, I was like, this seriously feels like a poor man's weird science. Yeah, it really like, did. It, it did not. I was like, is this a horror movie? Like, mm-hmm. it felt so weird like it was trying to be I didn't mind that though honestly I didn't it, you didn't it, find it distracting I I, I don't know I kind of liked it I kind of liked I mean and then when like the detective and uh okay what's the guy's name that I keep calling Anthony Michael Hall 
Uh, Chris Jason helps. Lively is Spanky? the actor's name. Yeah, was he in that Spanky? <laughs> well, Detective and Spanky finally like <laughs> come together like as a team. Mm-hmm. I feel like those disjointed like two separate places come together, and it's kind of enjoyable. Mm-hmm. See, but that's the thing. But up until that point, it feels weird. When sure. they come together, then it's like, okay, I'm on board with this weird like buddy mm-hmm. cop frat boy combination. I, I'm down with it. But before then, it just seems. All over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there was a scene maybe talking to what you're talking about. Like there was a scene early on where uh, JC is like, you know, he's talking to Chris. They're in the dorm room and he has like this monologue where he's Mm -hmm. like, you know, explaining like, I'm just trying to do this. You know, fuck you. It's like I was trying to do this to help you on. Yeah. And like, it's probably the best acted scene in, in the movie. And it's like. It's not really funny. It's, it's like no. actual, like it's, it's kind of tense to yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Was very John Hughes. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and it works it, as like a yeah. dramatic thing. But it that you know does it feel you know well and to follow that up with just like a shot of a slug being pulled by fishing wire it was just like okay that's a little <laughs> yeah a little, a little off just, brand just here <laughs> yeah <laughs> was that the next shot yeah yeah like they got to. <laughs> Their dorm was nicer than most college dorms too. Holy, I thought shit. it was like a prison. Except for they for were God's both sake. on like Shea lounges. And yeah, yeah, beds. but like their but, ca- but their counter space that they had behind their beds that is not realistic to any but college their, dorm. But their room was really small. Yeah, that but was like, pretty accurate. but like <laughs> the dorms, the dorms where I went to school were like two beds and that's it. Like no table, no yeah. desk space, oh, so nothing. See, no, we see, we hooked we hooked up our shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to assume. Had, they already did this, right? They hooked it up. We put one of the dressers. What did we, do? we we put the dressers because each had like a closet area, mm-hmm. kind of. So we put the dressers in the closets. Mm-hmm. Boom! Immediate room right there. Bunk the beds. Idea. And then we had we had totally had a little, we had a little kitchenette. We had I don't know. It's pretty badass. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we Based built on the, one. We made it work. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was gonna say shit, fridge. man. I had a bed and a dresser, and that was it. Like, no air conditioning either. And that was, Ooh. that was, we did not have yeah. air conditioning. Either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so I, I saw that dorm, I was like, man. Monmouth College, nice. when Bigler Hall was up. <laughs> 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 when they cut over to the sorority, like, I think, yeah, we get inside uh, Cynthia's room, mm-hmm. and it was like, uh, considerably larger, it seemed right. like. It was like, holy cow. And then there was like the scene of the girl waiting for the uh, the zombie cat to return home. And like, I was like, that can't be her room, right? I'm looking around. Yeah. Is there a bed in here? So it's like a common room or something, right? That, my that, that looked like a funeral parlor. Yeah, it really Didn't did. It? Yeah. The flower couches and like yeah. the crystal lamps. It looked oh, like a funeral the parlor. The weird datedness of their sorority <laughs> house was weird. Yeah. Like, okay, that sorority house looked older than the sorority house in Black Christmas. And that mm. Black Christmas was like a good 10 years before this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can somebody out there answer a question for me? Connell, let me know. Um, if you were in a sorority or a fraternity, do you have like a baller room that you have by yourself? See, right, all I see yeah. is from like, tell us what your sorority all I see is from like the movies. Was like. As, as my only reference when to I was, frat okay, houses. When I was, right. when I was in here. college, I never went to a sorority, but I was in a couple frat houses and they were never like they are in movies. They were pretty gross. Usually. They were I mean, disgusting. you still like, you still like bunk up with people. Right. right. Yeah. There yeah. were small rooms and yeah. multiple people in there. There was, mm-hmm. there was disgusting. Cause every movie has like, everybody has like, it's like a fucking apartment mm-hmm. with like a common living room. Not the frat houses. I was in. They were mm-hmm. well, nasty. Shit, I was thinking that this was a pretty small room. The fact, I mean, just, you know, you're saying that they're, it's bigger than a real dorm room, but yeah. to me, I was like, that's like a, they're training these kids for prison. This is like a prison cell, right? Most dorms are like closets. And like, bam. Yeah. I was lucky enough to be like in an older dorm room because I've stayed, I've also stayed in ones like the, my girlfriends were in college that were just like painted cinder block. Yep. And yeah. that was very that's, depressing. Mm-hmm. I've been in there. That's yep. pretty standard. Mm-hmm. Bummer. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I want to talk, make two points before we, uh, you know, get to the end of this. But the the B story that we were talking about that uh, that uh, uh, Detective Cameron is. You know, witnessed or he killed, he murdered the uh, in cold blood the axe wielding killer that killed his girlfriend, right? And buried her under the um, the house mother's cottage before it was built, right? The maniac killer, yeah, he buried him in a. It was a vacant lot at the time. So his yeah. whole purpose in this movie is like you know to reminisce, live in the past, and keep you know digging up the idea that like you know. You know, I did this a long time ago. He yeah. confesses it to Spanky at one point. Which I thought was a pretty hilarious scene. Yeah. <laughs> I leveled off the gun at his chest. You know what I did next? 
should you be telling me this? <laughs> Close. <laughs> I pulled the trigger. Yeah, I thought that was pretty fucking funny. Yeah, that was I don't, that's funny. why it's like the dialogue in this I thought was, I don't know if it's entirely successful, but they're like, you know, layering in those like little uh, humor beats. But yeah, so of course with these brain, uh, brain eating slugs, whatever, the right? brain spawning. The creeps. Yeah, the creeps getting in. They bring the uh, axe-wielding killer back to life. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets to track him down and kill him again. And that's all I thought about, too, was, like, I can buy, I mean, whatever. I can buy these things, getting the people and making them zombies or whatever. Or even getting the dead people and making them, because it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> But that guy would have been straight up decomposed. And how would the slug? He wrapped even... him in plastic. No, no, they don't. He wrapped him in plastic and then buried him in the ground. <laughs> and then they built a house on top of it. It was perfectly <laughs> preserved. No, okay. That thing, that slug would not have been able to get there. We have no indication that these slugs can dig. That's true. We just see them on top of the ground pulled by fishing wire all the time. That's the only <laughs> way we see them. And we even we don't they, see them burrow. We don't see them burrow. They could dig. They're not. They're not dug, the fucking um, tremors. No. You know. Yeah. If one even dug, they could tunnel. And if one dug into the guy's, the dead guy's mouth under the thing. Yeah. Even then, like. You don't have any room to like move your arms to like dig out. How did he get the fuck out? Yeah, how did he? He's dig got out? an axe. He dug himself out with the axe. We heard him. What? He was. That's what so are you much talking like, about? This is, this is way too much like work we have to do. There's like forty years, forty years compacted on top of him. He's. I mean, it's just like earth. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. There's no extra. There's no like yeah, kill bill five inches. Right. To punch exactly. At. <laughs> exactly. It's all hollow so space like under there. Who knows? Zombie axe man goes back from the dead and kills the house mother. (laughs) (laughs) And possesses the dog. Yeah, because in this movie, we have a possessed cat. We've got a possessed dog. Eventually, we have a busload of possessed fraternity brothers. Which is almost shot for shot. The way American Horror Story did their third season pilot for Coven, yep. when you see a fraternity bus full of fraternity bros flip over and they all get horrendously murdered, almost exactly like this scene. Very much. So, like, like I was saying, as much as this movie wears its influence on its sleeve, so many things since then have taken from this movie without crediting it. But that's it assuming blows that my mind. people actually saw this movie because apparently, on it's, it's too released. similar for them to have not seen it. Yeah, it really is. Well, I mean, how else are you going to get the Frankenstein guy who's got like a bunch of different? That's uh, exactly what happens in. American Horror Story. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like it's too similar to have not seen it. Someone that worked on the staff, it might not have been Ryan Murphy, but someone on the staff has seen this movie. Or at least is aware of that scene in this movie, if nothing else. They'd have to be because this movie's a goddamn horror classic. Uh, I, 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 well, I have a feeling correct. Ryan Murphy probably saw it. He's probably well hurt, re- he's, you know, first in his he's horror taken horror history. influences from many things. From many things, yeah. <laughs> well, this is one of those movies that, like, when it came out, it didn't get a good release. Like, I, it was released regionally, not like everywhere at once in the country. It had bad, you know, publicity or none and so it failed and didn't do anything this was fred decker's first movie his second one the following year was the monster squad he lucked out that the monster squad was already in production when this one came out mm-hmm. so its failure couldn't impact you know <laughs> him getting a job, like, job. Stuck with yeah. me. <laughs> so then the monster squad came out and drastically underperformed <laughs> <laughs> and so Whoops. then I think he limped along for a couple of years and then got RoboCop 3. And even though I think that one, finan- well, actually that one, uh, Ryan Pictures went bankrupt and that one didn't get a proper release. And so then they basically put Fred Decker on the pariah list. But years, you know, have gone by and it's like all these kids, you know, myself included, when I was a kid, I saw you know, all of his films mm-hmm. and have held them all in high regard. And now it's like, you know, now he's kind of getting his, you know, comeback, you know, do or whatever and getting to write, you know, the predator. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's an interesting career arc, both him and Shane black, uh, like we're in a fraternity together at UCLA. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why now they worked all on all together. these it's, films. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why eventually, you know, Shane black's uh, resurgence with um, uh, Iron Man three, Mm-hmm. It's about and, who you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the nice guys, but nobody saw that. I, but you should. No, you should go see the nice, nice guys. guys. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. that's a fucking great yep. movie. I have not seen them. It's oh, one of the it's best so of good. last year. It's one of the so best good. movies of 2016, hands you gotta down. See it, dude. It's a great movie. Everyone go see it. Yeah, and pay to see it because it's great. It's worth it. Yeah. I have trouble seeing new movies. Well, now it's an old movie. It came out. This is like a like an eight month old movie now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're behind the times, so it's perfect for you. 
So this movie culminates in the zombie apocalypse. Okay, it's a small self-contained zombie apocalypse. It leads to the poster uh, phrase or line wherever the detective's in the sorority, and it's like, I got good and bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. And uh, so <laughs> I really love that. Actually. Also, I, I like that, too. Yeah. I, I, I hate to keep bringing up the, the slug thing. Do it. Okay. Just do it. This the is slug the slug uh, could infect a fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> the whole fucking country in like two days, right? Would be zombies because there's so many of them. There's so many cats around everywhere. Yeah, but they're attracted to the the brain, right? And this is what they want to get into the brain. And it just so happens that in this sorority, one of the girls is doing a science project. This is the Schroeder, not the Schrodinger's brain. It's Chekhov's brain, right? It's Chekhov's brain, yes. She puts a it. bottle, a whole stack of bottles of brains, jars and brains, down jars. in the this basement. Jars. Jars. So Mason they're brain. ignoring the neighborhood cats and dogs, and they're just hanging around the sorority because they're trying to get into the basement sure. because that's okay. where the brains are. Yeah. yeah. I will... Just so I don't keep bringing it up, I'm going to go with that. You know, you bring up a good point, though. It is a very contained outbreak, mm-hmm. you know? And, well, second, like, and if it was just people, and then I can understand where that, okay, they're on a college campus, and they're kind of, they don't do anything else, whatever. Mm-hmm. I can see where that could be maybe contained. Mm-hmm. But it's going to hit just like a cat or a dog. Right. I was like, that's everywhere. Yeah. You're done. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, and all the people. It's amazing how many times, like, usually in this type of movie, you know, you expect uh, when you blow the head off of an infected creature, the slugs pour out and immediately jump into all the people who are standing in the near vicinity. But these ones don't. They, like, fall to the ground and run off into the bushes Mm -hmm. as fast as they can, presumably to infect something later on when they can catch them unawares. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if you did stop going after you, they, they must have a specific taste for human brains, which is weird coming from a spaceship. Yeah. It, <laughs> that probably point, has never seen point. humans. Yep. Um, because you think they'd go after, like, the lowest common denominator, and you'd see a bunch of fucking infected, like, possums and raccoons. The, uh, they think they'd go for what's Brandon, easiest. I got this Trash one, too. animals. Maybe the <laughs> alien brain is remarkably similar to the human brain. Humanoids. Yep. Yeah. Because sure, they did. <laughs> uh, I will stop bringing it up right now. I'll stop. Sure. Rationalize it however you need to, Colin. There you go. go like it. pigs or like humans, maybe the aliens are. Okay. I did love the part. Love the part. When she walks in, like, this <laughs> is the arm full of brains in a box. Like, <laughs> where can I keep these? <laughs> I was like, this is good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Just, oh, foreshadowing. The basement. The basement? Mm-hmm. I just yeah. don't want to see them. <laughs> The Love detective, it. well, because JC, unfortunately, gets infected and dies, but he is able to talk on a tape recorder and tell uh, Chris that, you know, you can kill things with heat, with fire. Yeah. Well, you can kill most things with fire. Well, and how do you, okay, so how do you figure that out? He saw. He, he lit was, one on fire match- with was, the matches. The matches. Well, he was trapped in the, the bathroom. bathroom. So why would you do that? Because that's the only weapon that he had at his disposal. Yeah. I, I would argue a single match <laughs> isn't a weapon. He had he a match book. book. He lit the book. He lit the book. There wasn't much was left in that book, though. So that book was, was almost empty. A small torch. I, okay. <laughs> I, so he lit the book, yep. and he just like was the thing attracted to heat, or just like happened they were just to, running past. So it just happened. Uh, thank God, one of them just happened to hit this. It kind of flame. Brandon, no, it, I saw it happen. Yeah. No, it was like <laughs> it was like someone. It was like someone salting a slug. You know, he was mm-hmm. just waiting for it. He's like, I'm gonna try this, see if it works. Or and he salt, waited. Salt the snail. Waited. Yeah, salt the snail. 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 It's always there's not enough salt in the world for her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's always sunny. We're back. Yep, we're um, <laughs> it, no, it's like salt. He just waited for it. It was running back and forth. And then when he knew, he threw the matches down. He's like, let's try fire. You know? And we were well, all like, yeah, yeah, kick yeah. ass. So here's what I would have done. Why didn't he just use one of the matches? Because there was like three left in there. Light some motherfucking toilet paper on fire and toss it out there. <laughs> like too. a big old yeah. wad of yeah. it. And then you would odds you are, if this Word. works, you'll get rid of a ton of them. Yeah. He's sitting, when he was uh, sitting there, I was thinking good, the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, is he going to light the yeah. roll? I would light the roll. Yeah. So Just, especially after like, yeah. the one worked, I'd be like, yeah. fuck, okay. <laughs> I'm surrounded by rolls of flammable paper. Damn it. Everything's yeah. collapsing can, under the yeah. weight of logic. I can even I can even lay one end and like roll this fucker out there. I was just so I that. have a clear path to the door. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Yep. Well shit, there goes my love for this movie. I can never watch it the same way again. No, that's not true at all. Uh <laughs> so, you're right. That probably would have been a better plan. Yeah. But knowing that fire kills them. 
the detective goes and sees the legend Dick Miller in the police station lockup. Is that why they said it's Miller time? That's a I reach. I think it's because that's it, a yeah, reach. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a reach. He was in Little Shop of Horrors. Yes, he was. Bucket of Blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tales from the Crypt. Demon was he Knight? the garbage okay. man in the birds? Probably. Probably. He's in Probably. like that all of right. Joe Dante's movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so they requisition a flamethrower, which you know every police station I hope <laughs> I has that. just like post the thing. All of them have that, right? I need a flamethrower. <laughs> You know, oh, okay. Let me go I mean, get that it. Was, that was that was like Leslie Nielsen style. Yeah. Just Convenience. Like ridiculous like yeah, comedy. Yeah. Was. That was just like, oh, I need a flamethrower. Like, oh, yeah. He just like walks in the Here back. You see it, and he's walking in the back. Like, right? Like, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't mind that. I liked that, actually. Watch the pilot light. It's tricky. <laughs> oh, another. That's Chekhov's pilot light. Yeah. <laughs> so this ends up with uh, Chris. With the flamethrower. No, no, sorry. Uh, Cynthia has a flamethrower. Chris has a shotgun. And they're fending off like the hordes of the living dead. Right. This is where the movie reaches peak awesome. They're fending off the uh, awesome. frat boys of the living dead. Right? Peak yeah. awesome at this point. Yeah. Because it's got, getting pretty awesome at this point. Yeah. Because Detective Cameron's inside like like wheeling around going, ah, psh, 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 yeah. psh, blowing away tons He's, of zombies. Yeah. He's like cowboy style shooting them up. Although prior to this, I have to mention, there's a great scene that we that we were trying to put together, like where I was listening to you guys put it together after where he's after he kills the uh, the undead axe murderer. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he goes back to his house and he is attempting suicide. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. the way the movie does this, you just see him like lounging in his house like we've seen it a dozen times in the movie. Yeah, he's just chilling on his couch. So he's flicking his lighter back and forth in his finger. Not lighting it, not but lighting just playing it. with it. Yeah. yeah. And there's a knock on the door. He's like, Ugh. there's a knock. He keeps knocking. He's like, fine. So he gets up and answers the door. But to answer it, he has to pull off all this tape. And you're like, yeah. the fuck? It's like, you're trying to keep the, the slugs from getting in or whatever. Right. That's and it's, immediately what I thought. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so Spanky's out there. Like, they got alfalfa and you, we need to, you know, they're getting through your brains. And we got to go. We got a mission. We got to yeah. do stuff. Got to use fire. Let's go. So then there's this shot of him, like, putting all of his guns and strapping on all of his gear. Strategically in front of the camera. The crotch shot with the gun. Yep. And we noticed like, yeah, that, that was a weird the, angle. Uh, yeah, it I was. Like I was fine with of it. But, I, but, I, but it was. it seemed purposeful. It really was. Yeah. But it all leads up to the idea that he was trying to... Sylvia you know, Plath him. himself? Yeah. <laughs> leaving the gas on. This was him about to blow himself up. Guys, I got a death wish. I That was a nice way of... You know, revealing uh, the intent of a scene, like a was little it? bit of because it took time. us a while to get there. We we all had to work together yeah. on that. It was a teamwork effort yeah. to, to well, figure out what was happening. I, I would have, yeah, I but think, you I got think it. I would have gathered it because <laughs> I, I started thinking about that and as soon as I saw the tape. I'm like, oh, it's uh, the slugs. And then when I saw the oven, I was like, oh man, I am stupid. Like, how did I not put that right. together? Yeah, with the lighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I thought he was just trying to like gas himself to death. I'm like, oh, he's fucking a lighter in his hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Foreshadowing again of the ending where he makes the noble sacrifice to contain all of the slugs mm-hmm. in the brains in the basement and blow them up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a scene where uh, our two uh, hero and heroine end up in a garden shed yeah. with a lawnmower. Yeah. I know. You're, you thought you were already at peak awesome. You could have gone an extra layer here. And I remember seeing this movie. And thinking like, oh, Dead Alive. Dead yeah, Alive. I saw it yeah. before Dead yeah. Alive. And Once it was again, like, another movie that has taken influence yeah. from this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was like this would be cool if he actually mowed down a bunch of zombies with the lawnmower. He only mows down one. one. But Dead That's Alive, it. obviously, it feels like right. They took they had to have because Dead Alive came out after this, so yep. they had to have just went up one notch. Yeah, and yes. into awesome zone. Dead, Dead Alive went up a lot. Of notches a, a lot, yeah, because <laughs> that was a pretty yeah intense scene. Brain dead for you folks outside of the U.S. You should mm-hmm. check that movie out. So, yeah, once Detective Cameron actually blows himself up and destroys the sorority house, all of the slugs are dead. Are they, Colin? Are they? Well, this depends on which version of the movie that you've seen. Oh, Oh, interesting. Because when I saw this movie originally on its television broadcast, it ended the way that we saw it tonight. In the end of the movie, this is now called the director's cut, uh, Detective Cameron, smoking corpse, staggers out of the house toward a cemetery 
falls down, slugs break out of his head, and then the alien ship returns with a searchlight looking for the slugs and then cut to black, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was awesome because it tied in with the beginning and it's like, okay, this is like a pretty decent ending for the movie. Rented it on video because I'm like, I got to see this movie again the whole way through on cut. And the ending, so after the house goes on fire, this is the way that it was in the theatrical release. Uh, the the um, Chris and uh, Cynthia kiss, and then a dog comes walking up. She bends down and says, "Like, hey, puppy!" It's like the, the thing. It's the creepy uh, zombie dog, and it squirts a uh, slug out of its mouth. Cut to black. The end. I like that too. I like both yeah. of them. I like yeah, them I don't mind. Yeah. I like both of them too. Yeah. Well. I was watching a interview with Fred Decker. He said that the alien ending obviously was the original one that he wanted to do, but somebody got cold feet somewhere and they switched it over to doing this, the dog one, which he said he never liked because it was like, he spent, you know, an hour and a half with these people trying to beat this thing. And then at the end of it, the implication is that she just got infected after, you know, kill. I mean, I prefer the cemetery one for sure. It, yeah. t- it ties back into so. the beginning. And yeah. Because otherwise that, that yeah. beginning scene doesn't really mean it, anything. It makes it feel more purposeful yeah. if, if you cut back to it at the end like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I think. I think you have to have the book end. Otherwise, yeah. you take out the aliens at the beginning. Well, it, maybe yeah, exactly. you, it maybe gives you a glimmer of hope, too, if you're like rooting for these people. Like, oh, the aliens are there I, finally now yeah. to try and take care of this shit. Like, yeah. They figured mm-hmm. out where it was or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hopefully stop the Night of the Creeps 2 uh, cemetery zombie attack. There was no Night of the Creeps 2. I was just going to say, was there Night of the Creeps So apparently the aliens uh, were able to capture them. Good. That's why I like how big it says way. thrill me on the video thrill box art on the back. It's like an oh, inch yeah. high There's at least. t-shirts yeah. with that on it. Yeah. So does that bring us to the end of our, uh, before we go to mail and our wrap-ups, Night of the Creeps, or do you have any stray observations or thoughts? Uh, I took notes on my phone, but I'm at 1%. Um. (laughs) (laughs) I'll get to it in wrap-ups. Demon technology. (laughs) Always failing you at the wrong time. We're still recording, aren't we? Yes, we are. Gotta hope so. Oh. We don't I need mean, a ghost in the shell repeat. We don't need repeat. a ghost in the shell repeat, no. <laughs> One of the only things that I, I I put was, and this dude's like futuristic fantasy. Why is that Why is that girl wearing high heels in the sand? Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's a good it's point. Like That's a good point. I thought that was out of control. Yeah. Did like, you that's know that like, that was, oh, the, yeah. And like yeah, his like yeah. fantasy his dream, dream yeah. his like fantasy of like, it's him on the beach, and this girl is serving him drinks and, and high in high heels and, and a bikini. Sand. Very yeah. obviously, like, kind of struggling like to struggling walk away that, in the sand in high actress. heels. Yeah, yeah, it was just, like, hilarious. Can you imagine? She was like, do I really have to? And they were like, yes, yeah. we do. They did that take seven times. Yeah. And they're like, all right, we'll just pick the best yeah. one. I think Michaela pointed out, it was very much like the... Um, the alternate scene in Wayne's World with Rob Lowe. Oh, again. it was totally it was like, like, like yeah. yeah. So at the end of Wayne's World, when they do like, let's do the happy, and it's like Rob Lowe and uh, Tia Carrera, and she's in like the nineties swimsuit yeah. on the beach. Yeah, that's it exactly what it was like. like, like that. Yeah, <laughs> that scene was yeah. kind of goofy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was out of step with the rest of the movie for sure. It was. Yeah. That was the yeah. Jaws moment. If you look at it like that, the the using the people crossing in front of him. Yeah. To cut back and forth between, but Wayne's World did that too. Yeah, I mean, the, Wayne's World did it after Jaws, obviously. But, yeah, you yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of goofy. I was like, because at first I was like, I didn't think that was him. I'm like, who is this old guy? Right, mm-hmm. with like a cabana I hat. I was on. like, why is he sitting in the sand wearing a white tux? That's yeah. Like good. yeah. <laughs> who is this fucking Colonel Sanders here? Like, what the good. fuck is going yeah. on? A little yeah. mustache, looking like Leon Redbone. Yeah, it's like yeah. a backdoor introduction to a character because we don't know who he is until he stands up in the dream, and then he's a cop at the crime and scene, right. and it's yeah. like. Oh, he's that cop as an old man. Yeah. It's like this movie struggles with linear thing. storytelling. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like he's, he's on the beach. He's looking out and he sees this like girl in a prom dress coming out of the ocean. I was like, what the fuck is this? The what problem is, is her hairstyle was different than her it hair was, was different. in the 50s. I didn't so recognize, you may not her. recognize yeah. her. And she's yep. in color. But yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Very confusing. Yeah. It would have been cool if she would have came out in black and white. Yeah, but that would have been pro- great. Oh, that would have been great. Maybe that would have been better storytelling. Yeah. They, they, I'm sure they could do that back then. In the what, 80s, they could have done that. No, but to isolate one... In the 80s, the they could have done that for sure. Didn't they do that in, like, like uh, They Live? Yeah, they did. There was no isolated colors. It was just black and white. 
Yeah, Wizard of Oz with hand paint. Oh, you're saying just change the whole... Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying she comes out. She's black and white, everything else. That's, that Color. is what I was That's what he was saying, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that they were able to do it. That was definitely impossible. They were able to <laughs> Yeah. It. Yeah. All right, so before we run too long, maybe we should summon Igor, our mailman. Oh. Igor, where Igor, are you, Igor. sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. They could have painted her in black and white. Let's if think if about nothing that. else, that like would have looked really boss? cool, actually. Yeah, look that would have been a great style choice. Yeah. I got a lot of mail this evening. Oh, yeah? Oh, oh all yeah. right. Wow. So, well again, done, Igor. we. Desperately want to hear from you, listeners. We love, we love uh, our when listeners. You write in, yep. And we'll read your comments on the air. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. So uh, a user CHH1138. C HUDs? On That's a what I wonder. Platform? Says in each episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a group of friends gather in a dark, dank basement to review movies. Uh, is a summary of us? Yes. Yeah. He says you never. Well, this was a review on, on iTunes. Mm. So this is a yeah. And right. You never know what you're going to get. European horror one week, Demolition Man the next. Yeah. Yeah. The, the conversation is a great mix of knowledgeable film analysis and normal moviegoer BSing. The results is always entertaining. We the Freak try. Show crew has been podcasting for years. There's tons of episodes to choose from. Be sure to go back through their archives. Uh, there are a million movie podcasts out there, but the Saturday Night Freak Show is one of the Absolute best, highly recommended. Oh, thank well, you. Damn, that's so yeah, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. About Night of the Creeps, Dom Cree writes in. What up, hey, Dom? Dom? He says, I just want to know who in the blue hell picked this mind-numbing, monumental <laughs> pile of steaming crap. What? Just kidding. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, this seems like a movie he would like. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever picked this is now officially my new motherfucking VP of the Saturday Night Shit, Freak Show. Shit, we just got usurped. You, you hear that shit? <laughs> Watching this was a mind trip back to teenage years in video rental stores. I can even smell the crappy multicolored popcorn right now. Five slug-filled exploded 1959 corpsicle heads out of five. Oh, and of course, how could I forget the obligatory mention of the timelessly awesome 80s hair? Yeah, wow. there was some great 80s hair in this. There's also the some Bradster. Oh, straight up God. babes in this movie. Yeah. That's a real There was a lot of yeah. layering over like button up shirts and plaid shirts with vests and stuff <laughs> in this movie. A lot of that. Lot of and the obligatory yeah. 80, like 80s, if you're doing a uh, movie that's set in a sorority house, you're going to do a slow pan through the, the pan, shower. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Where like, all the girls had like dry hair. Yeah. 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 Yep. Dry hair in the shower. Yep. No tops, but you know. Yep. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says, This is one of my favorite movies. I'd kind of like to know if you all see or feel the gay subtext between Chris and JC, or is it just me? Thrill me. Like when they're actually um, talking about it? Yeah. I mean, I just think they're supposed to be like best of buds. Like, I don't think. But like, Chris treats J- like JC like shit most of the time yeah. in this movie. Like, he totally. Like he shoves him around, give me your pillow, all that. Like I don't know. I think that was so he could. I think pillow fight. Honestly, they're just. I think they're just. Yeah, they just ragging on each other like buddies. Like I'm super mean to Ryan Burrett all the fucking time. (laughs) Damn Burrett, how you feel about that? Write in, tell us. Gary, no, I didn't get the gay subtext, but I felt that like they were just like there was clearly an alpha and beta in that friendship, you know. But like it wasn't a thing. I'm really mean to my best friend. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sometimes you go. people are just friends. It was definitely no <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street two situation. That's for sure. Jay, it was I not that. Jay Z took yeah. the lead a lot though. He said, like, that little speech, he stood up for himself. Yeah, but, like, and he, like, shut him down, like, like I'm re- talking to this girl for you. Yeah. But it seemed like every time he did, there was repercussions for that. You I'm know, not like, saying, I'm not saying Spanky wasn't an asshole. Yeah, was. yeah. But it, it was definitely no Nightmare on Elm Street 2 kind of, like, no. subtext. It was not <laughs> no, that no. that level right. of obviousness. Uh, Ryan Burr- Burrett writes in. Mm, oh, shit. Mm. He says, <laughs> After you just talk smack about it. After you just says, talk smack about it. I am a sucker for Night of Movies because this is another one I love. We know. Uh, mm-hmm. Gary Lee writes in and says, This is one of my favorites of all time. Cool. Uh, about my boyfriend's back, previous episodes. This is the last one they heard. Mm-hmm. They haven't heard over the top as of the time we're recording this. <laughs> In our epic uh, arm wrestling session. Gary Gilstrap. 
writes in and says, what's up, Internet Radio Superstars? I was super excited to find out that you were doing an episode on My Boyfriend's Back. I must have watched this movie a hundred times as a child because for some goddamn reason, it was the only movie my grandmother owned on VHS. It was my favorite film. That's right. Years had passed. (laughs) And I had seen it. I had I, I had seen it or even thought about it until I signed up for Netflix. I was going through the horror category, and what do you know? My boyfriend's back came up. It was the first DVD I had Netflix send me, and I waited three days for it to arrive. I immediately popped it in the DVD player, was sad and disappointed for the next 90 minutes. While the movie Aww. had been part of my Halloween movie rotation for years, I will admit that it is a shitty, shitty, shitty film. Turns out kids are stupid, and sometimes movie, movies blow. I disagree. <laughs> I had a thoroughly enjoyable time with that movie. I, he, I did too. Yeah. He does say, thanks for hours upon hours of great entertainment. Love the show. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Appreciate that. <laughs> I agree with that part. Colin loved reading that way too much. Uh, yeah. Yes, I did. Thank you, Gary. Uh, now I'm not crazy. Um, so we also posted a question to people on Facebook. What was the best zombie boyfriend slash girlfriend movie? And Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, wasn't there a prom night sequel, prom night three? Yes, there was mm, where it was three? a zombie. Uh, she hypnotized. I think she comes back. She hypnotized. He says, not exactly a zombie movie, but probably better than this. You guys hated this. I felt sorry for you guys. Prom night three is not quite as brutal, but not as awesome either. Well, to be fair, Karate Warrior 2, only one of us really hated that movie. Yeah. Hated, yeah, hated, I enjoyed hated my that work. Movie. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. And Chris Huddleston writes in. See Huds! And says, mm-hmm. regarding famous horror movie houses mentioned in this episode, on a trip to California a few years back, my fiance and I tracked down the Poltergeist house nice. in Simi Valley. It looked pretty much the same as it does in the movie. That's good, cool. because a lot of those like famous horror movie houses, they change the appearance mm-hmm. on purpose. Like the Halloween house is purple now. Oh really? Well, it's it's a purple dentist office oh. because they don't want people coming there and taking pictures yeah. in the front yard yeah. and shit. Whereas yeah. the Nightmare on Elm Street house still has the red door and it's white and everything, and the Breaking Bad house looks the same. Like a lot, of, you know. Mm-hmm. And the but Amityville house has those fucking square windows. Yep. God damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, the yeah, so it's awesome that you know at least a couple houses still look the same, but not everyone in California is a big fan of people coming taking pictures in their front yard. So yeah, I feel like mm-hmm. it's old. All right, yeah, but so don't, now, don't live whoops. in that fucking house then. There move somewhere else. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> you, know? You, you figure you're moving. You, that's why you're paying the premium probably for the house. The move yeah, into exactly. a movie house. I would imagine the realtor has to tell you that if you're moving in. This was used in this famous movie and but people come here like all the time. What if it's like your dream house, dude? What if you love that house? I feel like if you love the house, you love it because it was in that movie, right? I don't know. I haven't like, seen the inside. I, I don't, Somebody's just I'm, looking I'm like... I'm seeing I've a Venn diagram wanted, that's yeah. a circle oh. here. <laughs> it was oh. about a witch. What? What? What are you talking about? You're having that a revelation right now. <laughs> oh, he's having the a revelation. One. It was about a witch. <laughs> Pumpkinhead. L- yes. Was it Lamora? Yes. Lamora, a child's tale of the supernatural. Yes. <laughs> and then you skipped out before. That was the other brain in I was on for yeah. like a half hour. I'm sorry. Wow. That's yeah. what would be on. Previous podcasts with me are Lamora. <laughs> <laughs> and. I forgot the other one now. Deconstructing oh, hair. Deconstructing hair. <laughs> not regarding Henry. Deconstructing. Yeah. Why do you keep calling regarding Henry? <laughs> That's a hair. Stuck that way in yeah. my mind. Yeah. Similar titles. Okay. No. Okay. I don't know if they are or not. They are to me. So Does I he have brain damage? Dipping or uh, mixing them up. So now we should probably go around the room and do wrap ups to find out what everybody thought about Night of the Creeps. So you've been listening the whole episode. You're probably thinking that everybody's leaning one way or another, but this is where the suspense comes in, folks, because you really don't know until it comes out. Holly, what'd you think of Night of the Creeps? Night of the Creeps. Um. Well, you know the first the first half I gotta say didn't thrill me. It took me. While, I'm sitting there watching it, and it took me a while to to get into it. Because at first, I was like, "Man, I'm just not really feeling how much this movie's jumping around." It was just a little too unstructured. I thought. Um, like, I I appreciated the, all all the references and the fact, like, seriously, the director really wanted to do three different movies. It felt like. And I appreciate that you wanted to do those three movies, but at first it didn't flow. In the end, it did kind of all come together. And the the last, I don't know, was it like 20 minutes of the movie was was pretty fun. Um, so in the end, I, I did start enjoying it a lot more. Um, it was not as as gory 
I don't know why I thought it was going to be more gory. I don't. I didn't really have any specific impression of this movie, but I did have this weird feeling that there was going to be more graphics in it and um, or more graphic um, effects. And it didn't really deliver all that much, but it was it was still fun. It was decent. Um, there was parts that were disappointing. I really wanted more out of the lawnmower. <laughs> like watch Dead Alive. You'll yeah, get it. No. You'll get it. This is when have you never seen Dead Alive? I haven't. No. Oh, well, what? No. I guess what's going to be a future freak show <laughs> pick now. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. I saw the trailer for it and I was like, oh, that looks like fun. It's Peter Jackson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that is a freak show movie. Yeah. If there ever was one. If there ever was one. Yeah. And if you for haven't real. seen it, good Lord. Yeah. Good I haven't. You're missing Lord. out. So my lawnmower needs will be filled. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. they will. All right. Good. 110%. Yeah. Then. You need even be like, that's a little bit much. Yeah, exactly. Sort of exactly. Uh-huh. Like, like, like they could have stopped that a few minutes early. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. Um, yeah, and like I said, I, I was a little annoyed by the detective in the first half, but the second half, he was a lot more fun. Um, so yeah, I think the whole thing, it it just, it picked up more. Um, a lot of the cheesiness I felt was too forced. Like there's, there's such a fine line in, in B movies like this where, yeah, they know what they're doing, but it's like, they're trying too hard. And that movie did hit, this movie did hit those points a little too much. Um, it did feel a little forced. But it it didn't keep it from being enjoyable. I did I did like the weird beginning with the little aliens. It made no sense, but I kind of loved it. The freaky little Teletubbies were great. Um, I really do want to watch that movie. I want to know more about them. I think that'd be great. Um, I liked the fifties effect with that storyline. And then once I got past like the John Hughes and the weird science bullshit, like it was, it passed. It, it worked for me. Um, so it did take a little bit getting to it, but overall, I thought it was fun. Um, you know, as far as the night of movies go, I think, I think it's a good time. So I would recommend it. Yeah. I liked it. Brandon. All right. Um, let's see here. I really enjoyed a majority of this movie. Even the things that I was bitching about this entire episode, I, did right. not bother me about it at all. It's weird. It really, honestly, kind of worked on all levels for me. I really enjoyed it. Now, a lot of time, I have a hard try. I have, I have a hard time with like, I don't know, movies that are self aware. Just seem smarmy to me. Like, okay, I fucking get it, you know. Exactly. Uh, but for some reason, and I don't know, especially self aware horror movies can be difficult. I mean, it's very few that I like. Obviously, like Cabin in the Woods is. Definitely. I mean, it's just amazing. I love it. And sets a bar, a really high bar. Uh-huh. And in in the first little bit of this movie, I, w- I thought that's how I was going to feel about it. But I go through enjoying the entire thing. I would watch it again. Absolutely recommend. Yeah. All right. Um. So a couple things about this movie. So start off the bat with some real deep nerd, deep cut nerd stuff. Um, Bring the, it. The, the title sequence. <laughs> so here we go. The title sequence, the way the letters kind of come in is very much Stranger Things. Yeah. Very Stranger much, Things yeah. definitely very took like the red letters like glowing and moving in very slowly. Very much. Um, but I love it. I'm like, I'm like, great. I love this Stranger. Like I said, so many things have taken things from this movie that I didn't realize until I watched this movie, mm-hmm. which is weird because none of them acknowledge it. They, no one acknowledges they take stuff from this movie. I also can't believe totally I have, have not seen this movie until now. Yeah, I'm same here. Away. Same yeah. here. I have not seen this movie till now either, and I'm like, wow, so many things I love have taken things from this movie. How have I not seen it? Right, and yeah. the fact that the fact that we were watching this, like after I was watching this movie and saw like. The production value was great. Yeah. The acting for was great and, mm-hmm. and was really was on purpose. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I assumed it was going to be like a really piece of shit movie because. Yeah, like, right. Same I'll, here. I've never seen it. Yeah. So I was wildly impressed. The quality yeah. was a lot better than I expected. Right. A exactly. Considering some of the stuff we've watched lately that had more of a budget than this movie, but mm-hmm. didn't look like it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, the, like it has a really good, like how we talked about when we watched um, Night of the Demons, how like the title sequence was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Like this one was much more simpler than Night of the Demons, but it just is purposeful and beautiful, yeah. much like Stranger Things in a way. Mm-hmm. And like the nice, like they had like a nice monster type face on like the people's like names and the credits while the film was starting. Yeah. Um, and, but that's 
stuff only people like myself notice. <laughs> like, real, like I said, real deep nerd stuff. Um, for or me, right, graphic design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? Nice yeah. Graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> um, it does. For me, uh, nothing gets me in hook, line, and sinker than saying 1959 in a movie. That is my ma- my magic year because um, that's the year that Greece takes place in, and that yeah. is the year that Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and Big Bopper all died in the plane accident. Yeah. So Sweet. to me, when I hear 1959. I'm sold. I mean, let's do it. You know, I know this is a great year in American history. So when I heard that at the beginning, I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. Ironically, and I, Fred Decker's birth year. Really? <laughs> yep. Was he the one that made all that happen? Did he kill them? <laughs> did he, Did their death give birth mm-hmm. to Fred Decker? There we go. Very all right. Um, so when I hear that, I'm, I am 100% in. And the whole like Texarkana moonlight killer kind of setting the movie I was actually more emotionally invested in than the rest of the movie I kind of wanted to see more of that story um but I was still okay with that being the setup for the rest of the movie yeah uh, like I said, so many movies we love have taken from this movie. There's a scene where a character gives the same middle finger fucking crank move that Star Lord does in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah but we were all doing that in the eighties. Was that a thing in the eighties? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it was a spe- that was a specific like third grade. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh-huh. okay, we had already talked about how James Gunn took the slithering worms from Slither for this. Oh, James Gunn shit. wrote and directed Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. James Gunn fucking loves this movie. There's no way he doesn't, right? Mm. Two yeah. of his movies have yeah. influences from this. Um, I also kind of felt like it had maybe a tenuous Black Christmas connection just with like killings taking place in a sorority house because I had come probably a good 10 years before this, maybe a little more. Well, there was a lot of sorority yeah. house killing in the yeah. 80s. Though. Yeah, the but sorority Black Christmas was the... Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, <laughs> and also a more recent thing, um, I don't know if anyone has seen uh, Stephen King's Dreamcatcher, um, but there's a scene oh, where Jason... It is terrible. It is an awful movie. Don't go watch it if you haven't seen it. But there's a scene where Jason Lee is sitting on a toilet trying to reach his toothpicks that is almost exactly like the matchbook scene on the toilet. Almost like frame for frame, exactly the same. Um, but I, I really liked this movie. I thought it was a good watch. Um, I actually would like to pitch a remake of this movie. Um, bear with me here. So the movie <laughs> takes place in 2032. Okay. Uh, same kind of basic premise. Mm-hmm. When Chris and JC go down to the basement and open the, the uh, what is it, corpsicle? Is that what they called it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is John Spartan. Who oh, was frozen shit. in cryo jail and Demolition Man? Demolition Man crossover with Night of the Creeps. Yes. I'm yes. pitching it. Make it happen. A thousand times. Yes. They wake him up, and John Spartan's like, oh, "I hope you guys do whatever you need to do." And then, like, he becomes like the Tom Atkins character out of another time. Well, uh, Sold. that's got to be it, right? He's instead of Simon Phoenix, it's yeah. a guy who's it's, got it's, the fucking it's, it's, exactly. In his head. There you go. There yeah. we go. Let's. Copyright 2017 Saturday Night Free Show. There we Actually, go. Actually, that's Jason X, isn't it? She gets frozen. Yeah. The girl gets frozen in with Jason. They both get thawed out in the future. And... Yeah, it's not kind of. It's not John Spartan. It's not John it's Spartan. Not, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not, not Spartan. alone. It's not the same. Um, but I will say I did meet Tom Atkins at a convention two or three years ago. Uh, he drinks and smokes IRL as much as he does in this movie. Uh, yeah. uh, he he uh, <laughs> does not do as much acting as he does showing up and being himself on set. At least that was the impression I got from it's when I met fine. him. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't disappointed. I will say that. Um, I would say this movie, like, even though, like, like Holly pointed out, it was like three different movies kind of like shoehorned together because this is the budget I have. Mm-hmm. It was still a fun watch, mm-hmm. um, even though if you poke too many holes in it, it'll fall apart for you. But I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Well, it didn't. I mean, even poking all like the, the, the questions that I had yeah. didn't make me like the movie less. Right. Exactly. And in fact, I like the kind of three movies in one idea of it, or four movies in one, too, if you count, like, yeah. film, noir, crime, drama. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Slasher movie, zombie movie, detective movie. I have a, I have a movie. problem. Text Arcade and Moonlight Killer Slasher, really like yeah. Horror movies in general is because I tend to have a problem staying interested in things for a long period of time. And so I really enjoyed that mm-hmm. about it. So Because it kept changing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've always been a fan of this movie since the first time I saw it, right? I saw this movie on late night TV or whatever. So I didn't catch it in its theatrical run and I didn't see it on video. I saw it on TV and I'm like, this movie's awesome. And then I had to go and track it down (laughs) after that on uh, VHS, had a copy of it. And then a strange thing happened. A, no one that I knew knew of this movie. 
because the only place you could find it was on TV or at the video store. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the hell happened with Fred Decker's movies, but this is also, I think, which has given rise to like the legend of Fred Decker in certain circles. I mean, now we're past this. The stuff's available. But the fact that his two movies that he was most known for, The Monster Squad and this, bypassed the DVD era. So DVDs are coming out all over the place, and we're all going like, okay, at some point they're going to get around to putting out like The Monster Squad and Night of the Creeps, and it never happens. And this period goes on and on and on. Eventually we go into Blu-ray territory, and that goes on and on and on. And then one day there's like a screening at the Alamo Draft House in Texas where they played, I think, The Monster Squad first. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was like a huge fucking deal. And then they got Fred Decker and the cast to come down there, and then they got a Blu-ray and that made, I think, uh, Sony go like, hey, don't we have one of his movies? This is what he thinks anyway. And then suddenly we got a Blu-ray slash DVD release of this. So the reason that you guys haven't seen it and the reason that it's not talked about in like, you know, you've probably seen Reanimator or right. you've seen Night of the Demons or you've seen uh, Return of the Living Dead. You know, it's like those movies have been kept alive through multiple reissues over the years. And these ones, by just skipping that generation, it's amazing. It's like they're lost films. That's bad the cover art too. That's it is bad. Not cover the art. Uh, yeah, it's super generic and the the theatrical poster is a lot better than that. Um, but yeah, so it's it's like an an undiscovered movie that you know, like you guys were saying, it's like this is a professionally made film. It has a uh, production value higher than I guess you know uh, uh, some of the stuff that we cover on this show. You know, or maybe what you're expecting for a movie that you have never probably heard of, or maybe right. you have. I was, you're expect- I was expecting you've heard of it. <laughs> level or Night of the Demons level production yeah, value. So, yeah, same here. Yeah, this is substantially like a higher budget. This is uh, TriStar Pictures and Charles Gordon, the producer, his brother, uh, and him. I think produced the the original Predator movie. So I mean, like, I mean, you they, know, they paid for like three crane shots in this movie. I was yeah. like, wow, that's kind of impressive. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think that it, its status has always made me um, like an advocate for it. You know, it's like so maybe that's made me think of it as better than it is because like you haven't seen this movie, you got to see this movie Night of the Creeps. You know, it's like you should be talking about this. Like, I mean, you know? it's crazier that it it fell into like that weird middle ground for so long, and then when it comes out, because whenever that happens, it's just like piece of shit quality ever movie like okay well i get why this never got re-released mm-hmm. so i was that's why i was just like doubly impressed by like the production value I was like, mm-hmm. damn some yeah. things just get tied up in rights or you know something like that i mean i remember hearing a story there were a couple guys who were trying to remake a movie called the changeling right yeah and uh, yep. they were talking about like you know uh, uh, getting this movie they had deals and all this and the, i think it was the writers right the guys who did sinister and mm-hmm. doctor strange and they found out, like, and they couldn't make the movie all of a sudden. Everybody's like, well, we can't actually do it. And I was like, why? And it turned out that the rights to the movie, one of the guys in the, who held the rights was in prison for, like, tax evasion or something. And because he's in prison, he can't make any money off of, you know, the film. So they can't remake the movie. And the movie's held up. Like, and then it fucking doesn't exist. There's no Blu-ray release of The Changeling. And there's another movie that you probably should have seen. You haven't because sort of got it's been the movie. out of it's George, George C. Scott, Scott and that, yep. yeah, but it's been out of circulation now for you know, well, mm-hmm. it did come out on DVD, but it's yep. been out of circulation for years because they can't re release it. Um, so it's weird things like that happen in the movie business. Um, this movie, uh, it has you know, all the, the, the practical effects I like, the tone of it. The humor I like, I dig, you know, it's like it's a part and parcel with these other movies that we mentioned. However, watching it tonight, it's like if I can see the problems with it, um, and to be fair, you know, and criticism is that the musical score, I think, again, we were talking about this on Night of the Demons. There's certain scenes like when all the, the dead guys are coming out of the um, the bus. Mm-hmm. Right. It's this low ominous kind of, you know, you know, electronic synth mm-hmm. thing. And I'm like, but what if you played something that was up and you're know, trying to be frightening, but like, you know, more bombastic mm-hmm. because they're moving really slow and the movie and the music's really, you know, it's just like a tone. And so it feels like the scene's going on forever. It's not exciting. How come it's not exciting? It's because the music isn't exciting you mm-hmm. about it. So I wonder if, again, there's an issue here where, you know, if 
it was edited with a snappier rhythm and the score was, you know, not entirely redone, but tweaked in places. I think you'd have a stronger film. Like what else? The cues that, were just pumped up. Yeah. And there's that thing that I hate that movies do where it's just like generic new wave song. And yeah. It's just all these things. I'm just like, just pay some fucking band. Yeah. Just pay for the real songs. Well, because we were talking last week about over the top and its soundtrack. You know, it's like they're 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 goofy. They spent all the money on that songs, soundtrack. But at least you know that would be the you buy yeah. the soundtrack album. With this, they're like, pff, you know, I mean, none of them are. I mean, there was like seven songs. It's like this is our version of like a fifties song. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. like, yep. you know, listen to new wave. Well, they did have one that was a legit fifties song, wasn't it? There was one, I think it was a legit 50 song. Yeah, one on the radio, the but everything else, like, yeah. There was, the, yeah. There was one when, uh, the I think the Bradster came to the door when he was a zombie. Mm-hmm. That it was, they were playing a legit song. That, that I was re- the same one that was playing on that same night, yeah, 1959. Cause I, I've yeah, because I remember hearing that on the radio yeah. growing up. That's mm-hmm. a legit song. But yeah, it's it's a little sad to think that like Over the Top had a more legit soundtrack than this movie, though. Like, I mean, it's just a pet peeve that, that I see in movies, especially from that from this era. You saw it all the time. Yeah, and it, all through throughout the eighties and early nineties, it was just like punk rock song. And I yeah. was just like, come the fuck on, mm-hmm. or yeah. just like I don't know. It's just it's a weird pet peeve. Maybe it's because I'm a musician. No, nope, but over the top had like Sammy Hagar, Robin right. Zander. Like they paid mm-hmm. money to actual Kenny Loggins. They paid yeah. money to several people for great songs. So it's weird that like a canon film that like you know is known for making crazy low budget movies spend more money on a soundtrack than a movie like this. Mm-hmm. Right. You know how I knew that Tom Atkins was a thing? No, hmm. I mean, I knew that you know he was an awesome uh, icon of, of film. I went to a screening, a midnight screening of Suspiria at Chicago's Music Box, and there's a guy was who's wearing trash? a T-shirt that said, had Tom Atkins' face and said Atkins. It was a joke on the diet that yeah. was going uh, on yeah. at the time, but I'm Love like, it. that's fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. And there you go. I know that, like, I, the fact that I know what that is. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know. Like Tom Atkins, movie treasure, should have done even more stuff. I mean, he's a legitimate movie star. I think the fact that he's in this movie elevates it, you know, just because that character is, uh, to me anyway, that hard boiled, you know, detective uh, thing. He's awesome. And it actually, uh, uh, Fred Decker said that the, the way that he came up with the movie, he had an idea that there was a guy, who, uh, you know, a hard boiled detective wakes up from a dream, answers the phone and says, thrill me. <laughs> and then he was he like, then he, that. yeah, he's that like, that's that. all I got. Who is this guy? What's he doing? He's like, I got this idea of these, this other thing that had these two kids in it. And he's like, okay, so I know who those kids are. Whatever they did caused this detective to get involved. And that was like the process of how the, the movie came about. And then, you know, like this, uh, just kind of, you know, the, the stew of like all of these uh sci-fi horror late night movie influences that he's had figure you get one shot at doing a movie maybe you're gonna put everything that you love into it and i think it shows this is one of those Mm -hmm. like uh kitchen sink movies for people who were born in the 50s lived through the 60s and 70s watching those movies on tv and in the 80s then we got like a lot of these you know uh homage movies um, and this is one of the better ones, I think. So I would definitely recommend Night of the Creeps. Yeah. So next week. Next week. We're Sean. Watch a Sean. Movie what do you think? It's chosen by Sean. 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 Urban Legend. We're going to watch Urban, Urban Legend. Urban Legend. All right. Not Urban Legend 2, surprisingly enough, but yeah. Urban Legend 1. I say this only because Jared Sean Lito. is uh, notorious for picking yeah. sequels. Yeah, so loves that's, sequels. That's next week <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll tune in. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>